Good day to everyone. I would like to tell you about ASEAN, an organization I have come to know these past six years as the Philippine Permanent Representative to ASEAN. Uh, in such a position, I have come in intimate contact with ASEAN, its history, its mechanisms, its objectives, and how it would like to serve the people of ASEAN. First, let me tell you about uh, attempts by Southeast Asia to form regional organizations. Everybody must be familiar with uh, CETO, Southeast Asian Treaty Organization, which was really not a treaty. And uh, it uh, attracted only uh, a few uh, members, uh, two Southeast Asian members, Thailand uh, and uh, the Philippines. And uh, of course, uh, it no longer exists today because it has not fulfilled its uh, objective. Uh, another uh, precursor of ASEAN is the uh, ASA, Association of Southeast Asia. Uh, again, uh, it did not uh, last uh, long uh, because uh, it did not fulfill its objective of uh, attracting other uh, member countries in Southeast Asia. And then uh, the now famous Mafilindo, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, in short, Mafilindo, uh, which was formed by uh, uh, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Indonesia, purportedly to solve uh, their uh, uh, conflict, uh, but ironically, it uh, died for the very purpose uh, it was set up, which was to solve conflict. Everybody is familiar with the confrontasi, whereby Indonesia uh, confronted or uh, adopted a belligerent attitude towards Malaysia because of the uh, uh, f uh, formation by Malaysia uh, to include uh, Kalimantan, which uh, Indonesia is uh, claiming. And everybody is also familiar with the Philippine claim to Sabah uh, in 1962, which exacerbated the uh, situation among the three members. Again, uh, Mafilindo uh, did not fulfill its objective. It failed to attract additional members and it died a uh, natural death. So uh, comes uh, August 8, 1967, the five founding fathers of ASEAN uh, boldly uh, came to Bangkok to establish their vision to put up an association of uh, Southeast Asian nations, uh, ASEAN. And so uh, now the iconic uh, photo whereby the five founding fathers uh, of ASEAN uh, established the Association for Southeast Asian Nations. I'm happy to tell you that a Filipino painter, a very young um, uh, artist called uh, Peter Paul Blanco, executed in canvas this iconic uh, painting where these five visionary leaders signed the now famous Bangkok Declaration. And this painting is proudly exhibited in the uh, ASEAN uh, Secretariat at the gallery there. I'd like you to visit the ASEAN Secretariat to look at this uh, famous uh, painting. Uh, this was unveiled during the Philippine chairmanship of, uh, the, of ASEAN in, nine, in 2017. From five founding members, ASEAN expanded to include Brunei Darussalam in 1984, and onwards, uh, the so-called CLMV countries, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and Myanmar, uh, joined uh, in 1997, Myanmar and Laos uh, joined. Um, and from then on, uh, from 1976, when the first summit was held, to 2015, when the ASEAN, ASEAN community uh, was formed or was launched, uh, ASEAN underwent several uh, uh, landmark strides uh, to uh, have, what we, now have what we now call uh, the ASEAN community. The ASEAN community has three pillars. Uh, the first pillar is called the APSC, ASEAN Political and Security Community. 
Then the second pillar is ASEAN Economic Community. Uh, the first pillar, uh, the APSC community, seeks to establish peace and stability in this uh, region. Uh, the second pillar, economic uh, integration, is its uh, ultimate objective. And the third one is socio-cultural pillar, which seeks to uh, uh, produce a loving and caring uh, ASEAN uh, community. ASEAN has established several uh, mechanisms. First, they interact among themselves. So we have the uh, association of 10 uh, member states. Uh, they are usually uh, mentioned according to the to our alphabetical order. So Brunei, Darussalam uh, comes first, and then you have Cambodia, Indonesia, you have Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, uh, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and uh, Vietnam. Uh, among themselves, uh, you have the uh, from the lowest level. Uh, we have the Committee of Permanent Representatives to which I belong. There are several institutions or mechanisms of ASEAN that are based in Jakarta. So the Committee of Permanent Representatives is the body uh, tasked to do the day-to-day -day, uh, dealings or operations of ASEAN. I will go back to its functions in a little while. Uh, then, uh, another uh, mechanism that is based in Jakarta is uh, the ASEAN Foundation, which is the private sector platform of ASEAN. This is the body or the mechanism that uh, tries to incorporate the stakeholders from the private sector, from, the civil, so from civil society, uh, etc. I also represent the Philippines in the Board of Trustees of the ASEAN uh, Foundation. Uh, another uh, body based in Jakarta is the ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation, ASEAN IPR, uh, we call it. Uh, and then um, the CPR interacts with the external partners of ASEAN. So there is a mechanism called ASEAN plus three. The three countries uh, representing um, China, Korea, and Japan. So this is the APT, or the ASEAN plus three mechanism. Uh, this is also based in Jakarta. It's composed of the ambassadors of the 10 member states and the ambassadors of those three countries uh, in ASEAN. That's a separate mechanism by itself. And then the EAMJ, EAS, uh, meeting, of the ambassador, uh, meeting of Ambassadors in Jakarta. Uh, this is, this uh, is composed of the 10 member states ambassadors and the ambassadors of the EAS uh, countries uh, in uh, Jakarta. The EAS countries are, if you want to remember them, just if you know the 10 dialogue partners of ASEAN, Minus two, the EU and Canada. So those are the eight. So you have Australia, China, Japan, India, uh, Korea, the United States, New Zealand, and uh, Russia. Those are the eight. Uh, we call them plus eight uh, partners of ASEAN. They make up the EAMJ in uh, Jakarta. Um, so uh, let me talk about the... ASEAN mechanisms first. Within ASEAN, we have several uh, mechanisms. Uh, the, the most uh, famous of which would be the ASEAN Ministerial Meeting, AMM. So every year, around the end of July or August, uh, they uh, meet uh, wherever the uh, chair, uh, chair's capital is. To, uh, this year, 2018, uh, Singapore is the chair of ASEAN. Last year, uh, Manila was the chair or, uh, or the seat uh, uh, of the uh, rotating chairmanship of ASEAN. So AMM is the ASEAN Foreign Ministers Meeting. So you go by uh, hierarchy, you have the CPR there, and then you have the senior officials meeting. This is another layer of mechanism within ASEAN. This is composed of usually permanent secretaries or vice ministerial level 
of ASEAN, of the member states of uh, ASEAN. And then you have the ministerial meeting here, uh, foreign ministers. Aside from this, you have the sectoral uh, mechanisms. For example, you have the uh, working group on environment uh, uh, mechanism. Then you have the senior officials on the environment and then the ministerial meeting on the environment. You have, for example, transnational crime. So you have the uh, uh, technical working group on transnational crime. You have the senior officials on uh, trans some TC, we call it. And then you have the ministerial meeting on transnational crime, uh, which handles issues such as cybersecurity, terrorism, uh, trafficking in persons, etc. So uh, each sector would have such levels of cooperation among ASEAN themselves. Uh, so uh, we go on and on and on, uh, depending on the sector. Think of any sector, ASEAN has an equivalent uh, mechanism. So um, this is among ASEAN member states. I mentioned just now that in Jakarta, there is an ambassador's group of the plus three. There is also a senior official's level of the plus three. So you call them APT SOM, ASEAN plus three senior officials meeting. And then the ASEAN plus three ministerial meeting and the ASEAN plus three summit level meeting. So you, uh, you just, uh, Try to remember the various levels of cooperation and then you can uh, visualize already the different levels or the different mechanisms uh, within ASEAN in relation to its external partners. Uh, for the EAS, this is the level, uh, the, this is the strategic forum, EAS where uh, important political, security, economic, and sociocultural issues are discussed. And uh, today, the EAS, uh, the East Asian Summit uh, mechanism, is uh, a much coveted uh, or, or a very important mechanism, uh, so much so that many leaders of the world want uh, to attend uh, this uh, EAS uh, summit. Last year, during the Philippine uh, chairmanship, we made a special uh, uh, exception by inviting the heads of state or heads of government of Canada and the EU who are not really members of the EAS because uh, it was the 40th anniversary of uh, relations with these two respective uh, partners of ASEAN and uh, uh, who have also been applying to become uh, participants or members of the EAS uh, summit. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I said, this is considered to be the most important leaders-led strategic level or mechanism of ASEAN's cooperation with its external uh, partners. I'm saying external partners because there are different levels of ASEAN's uh, partners. So you have the 10 full dialogue uh, partners uh, that I mentioned uh, just now. So you have uh, uh, Australia, uh, China, Canada, India, New Zealand, uh, Japan, Korea, the United States, Russia, and the EU. So these are the 10 full dialogue partners. What do we mean by full dialogue partnership? It means um, uh, that ASEAN has strategic and important uh, levels of cooperation with these 10 full dialogue partners, and uh, they meet at the, um, at the various levels with the ASEAN uh, member states, the levels that I mentioned uh, just now. So you, uh, you have uh, ASEAN-China uh, bilateral partnership, you have ASEAN-Canada, ASEAN-US, ASEAN-Russia, ASEAN-Republic uh, of Korea, etc., etc. Et 
So um, these are the full dialogue partners. There are other partners because right now there is a moratorium on dialogue, full dialogue partnership. Uh, recently, Norway, Switzerland, and Turkey have been admitted as sectoral dialogue partners. They don't have full-fledged ministerial level meetings or summit level meetings with ASEAN, but they are able to carry out their partnership with uh, ASEAN uh, in various uh, sectors. Uh, and then you have the development partners of ASEAN. Um, Germany is one of those. And uh, of course, other countries uh, uh, have been applying to become external partners or formal external partners of ASEAN. There is a mechanism uh, whereby ASEAN assesses the application of these external uh, partners of uh, ASEAN. Um, we, I cannot imagine ASEAN today uh, functioning without uh, its uh, relations uh, with its external partners. Almost every sector of cooperation involves an external partner of, of ASEAN. You must be familiar already with issues like uh, the South China Sea uh, issue and the uh, Korean Peninsula issue and uh, uh, efforts at countering uh, uh, terrorism, trafficking, especially in women and children uh, uh, and so many other issues. ASEAN cannot handle this alone. They have to work uh, extensively uh, and uh, deeply with their external partners in uh, addressing those uh, issues. Uh, now I would like to talk about the different areas of cooperation uh, of ASEAN among themselves and vis-a-vis -vis their external uh, partners. There are many such areas uh, of cooperation uh, ranging from those that fall under the APSC, the ASEAN Political and Security Cooperation Pillars, uh, to the economic uh, integration, uh, economic community pillar, and the socio-cultural uh, uh, pillar. I would like to focus on uh, the favorite uh, or priority areas of cooperation uh, of uh, the Philippines. The beauty of this regional integration or, or, or this ASEAN reorganization is how uh, national interests could be forged to become regional interests. And uh, as a chair of ASEAN last year, I have seen this uh, in its most exciting and its most dynamic uh, form. Uh, all right, um, th there could be hundreds of areas of cooperation, but let me just focus on those that are very active uh, right now. Um, in the political and uh, security uh, pillar, uh, as everybody is aware, countering uh, terrorism in all its form is a vital area uh, of cooperation. Uh, we forge agreements, uh, declarations, plans of action on how to combat uh, terrorism from its military uh, facet to the prevention of radicalism, especially among the youth. In October 2017, uh, 2018, for example, in the coming few weeks, we're going to organize in Jakarta a, an ASEAN IPR, IPAR, Peace and Reconciliation Institute, a symposium to involve the youth in preventing the spread of uh, radicalism. Because uh, 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 recently they have noticed that uh, especially ISIS uh, uh, operatives have been working among the youth sectors to radicalize them 
to become uh, agents of uh, terrorism. Uh, so uh, the, the, the youth will become active agents in preventing the spread of uh, radicalism. Um, so th this is a very important area uh, of cooperation. Um, a very controversial and very uh, uh, important issue lately, of course, is the South China Sea issue. Uh, under the ASEAN Charter, the, the objective of ASEAN is to maintain peace and stability in the region. ASEAN does not purport to be a, uh, an organization that will settle who owns what in the South China Sea. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, basic principles of ASEAN is uh, rules-based, uh, that is that it is a rules-based organization that will always focus on international law. So every time we, uh, we talk about uh, South China Sea, we always include uh, respect for the 1982 UNCLOS as the basic document that will govern such uh, areas uh, of uh, interest. Um, lately, there have been several controversial moves by claimant states uh, to which tended to raise the tensions in the region. And ASEAN moved quickly to uh, let these simmering tensions uh, cool down. And right now, uh, during the Philippine chairmanship, we were able to issue a framework on the formal, consult formal negotiation of a code of conduct, a COC. Uh, and uh, as, as country coordinator for ASEAN-China relations, the Philippines is now spearheading the negotiation of this very important document. Uh, it has long been in the making. Since 2002, we have always wanted to come up with a code of conduct on, on, uh, that will govern the behavior of uh, especially the claimants in the South China Sea issue, and uh, hopefully, uh, under the Philippine country coordinatorship, um, we will be able to uh, manage, uh, if not solve, uh, the South China Sea um, issue. I, I mentioned country coordinator. Uh, uh, this is another very interesting uh, mechanism invented by ASEAN. Each ASEAN member state is responsible for a certain bilateral partner. So the Philippines will be or is the country coordinator for ASEAN-China uh, relations starting uh, this year uh, until uh, 2020, so three years. Um, uh, we were formerly country coordinator for ASEAN-Canada uh, relations, uh, and so on and so forth. So each country is responsible for uh, bilateral relations with uh, our dialogue partners. Every year, an ASEAN member state assumes the chairmanship of ASEAN. Uh, the, this uh, system allows a member state to direct the uh, theme, the accomplishments of ASEAN for a particular year. This year, it is Singapore's uh, turn to be chairman of ASEAN, and the theme of Singapore this year is innovative and resilient uh, ASEAN. In 2017, the Philippines had the privilege of uh, being chair of ASEAN, which means to say that from the committee level, the Committee of Permanent Representatives, to the senior officials, the ministerial, and the summit levels, uh, we chair those various uh, mechanisms of uh, 
ASEAN. Uh, just now I mentioned uh, that there are different levels of these uh, mechanisms. So last year, the Philippines chaired the summit level meetings of the ASEAN plus three. So you saw uh, the uh, arrival here of the leaders of the plus three countries. Uh, Premier Li Keqiang of China uh, was here, Prime Minister Abe was here, and of course the President, President Moon of the Republic of Korea. So this is the ASEAN plus three summit level that the Philippines uh, chaired uh, last year. Uh, the EAS summit is, as mentioned, is a very important uh, summit. And uh, you saw uh, the most important uh, leaders of the world flocking to ASEAN to attend the EAS uh, summit. President Trump uh, was here, uh, and, you, and the leaders of the three uh, plus three countries uh, were here. Prime Minister uh, Medvedev uh, was here, uh, and uh, many other important leaders uh, come here, uh, came here last year for the Philippine uh, chairmanship of uh, the ASEAN. I can say that uh, of the many accomplishments of ASEAN, we fulfilled two of three of our flagship uh, deliverables last year. And uh, I'm proud to say that after more than 10 years of negotiations, we were able to come up with a consensus, ASEAN leaders' consensus on migrant workers, uh, which was a very difficult document to, uh, to produce because ASEAN is made up of diverse interests. Some countries like Singapore and Malaysia are sending countries and others are uh, like the Philippines, uh, sorry, they are receiving or host countries and countries like the Philippines and Indonesia are sending countries and there are countries that are, that are mixed like Laos, uh, Thailand, they both send and received, uh, receive migrant workers. The intention of the consensus on migrant workers really is to promote and protect the rights and privileges uh, of uh, migrant uh, workers. So we were able to deliver this now famous consensus on uh, ASEAN leaders' consensus on migrant workers. Uh, another uh, big deliverable last year was, as mentioned, the COC framework uh, to start the formal negotiations on uh, the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea. In previous years, uh, we have attempted to come up with negotiations. As uh, previous to this, they, there have only been consultations. Now, this is really formal negotiations on a Code of Conduct. What we were not able to deliver last year was the RCEP, uh, the Regional uh, Cooperation on uh, uh, free trade agreements among the six member uh, countries. So, uh, under the Philippine chairmanship, we were able to deliver the framework uh, on the Code of Conduct on the South China Sea, an outstanding accomplishment, uh, if I may say so. What we were not able to deliver was the RCEP the regional uh, cooperation on uh, economic, uh, the regional economic uh, cooperation among the 10 member states and six other partners of ASEAN, Australia, New Zealand, uh, China, Korea, Japan, and uh, India. Uh, this will be the biggest free trade agreement, economic uh, cooperation agreement in, in the world if, uh, if we are able to finish uh, the, the negotiations and deliver the document this year under the chairmanship of uh, Singapore. Um, as chair of ASEAN last year, we were able to accomplish a number of deliverables, a number of accomplishments under the various mechanisms of, of uh, ASEAN. Uh, I chaired the uh, negotiations for various uh, EAS uh, documents. 
uh, such as the lead EAS leaders declaration on uh, chemical weapons, on poverty alleviation, on fighting terrorist uh, ideology, uh, and many other uh, documents uh, which we negotiated with our other partners. Uh, last year was also especially uh, uh, important because it was the 50th anniversary of the founding of ASEAN. And we were able to come up with many commemorative activities that uh, celebrated the many accomplishments of ASEAN. Under the Philippine chairmanship, for example, we paid tribute to the heroes of biodiversity. So we, um, we uh, awarded the heroes of biodiversity uh, medals to a selected uh, ASEAN, one per country, heroes of biodiversity. By the way, the Philippines hosts a center of excellence, the, Phil the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, ACB, which is located in uh, the UP Los Baños uh, campus uh, out there in uh, Los Baños, Laguna. Um, we also uh, paid tribute to uh, science and technologies of rice. So we gave out the uh, ASEAN ambassadors of rice science and technology uh, last year. We also gave away uh, awards to uh, ASEAN youth social entrepreneurs uh, of, uh, of ASEAN. So, uh, Indeed, last year saw the celebration of the 50 years uh, of uh, ASEAN. And uh, you will also see here the uh, specific areas of cooperation where the Philippines is champion of. And now I come to a very important uh, issue or area of cooperation close to my heart. And this is the uh, championing of the cause of women in ASEAN. Whenever we negotiate documents or plans of action, we see to it that the participation of women in all areas of ASEAN cooperation is enshrined in every uh, document. I am happy to say that after several years of, of, uh, of trial, the Philippines uh, will be hosting a symposium in Cebu this year to launch an ASEAN registry of women experts on peace and reconciliation. This is to mainstream the role of women in peace and reconciliation processes. Uh, this uh, select group of women who are experts in mediation, negotiation, a teaching of uh, peace uh, initiatives, uh, etc. Uh, this will be a, a, a pool source of experts whereby ASEAN member states can draw from so that uh, they can uh, utilize the expertise of these uh, women. Last year, under the Philippine uh, chairmanship also, um, we launched a, uh, a program called the Economic empowerment of women. So we are uh, enjoining women entrepreneurs around ASEAN to uh, teach them uh, uh, the techniques on startups uh, and, uh, and the teaching of uh, uh, business uh, uh, knowledge among our women folk. Um, another important area of, of cooperation that the Philippines uh, is championing uh, is, of course, uh, migrant workers, uh, as mentioned, and uh, the role of youth. Uh, uh, last year, we also issued a declaration on nutrition, the less sexy topics of ASEAN. Uh, every time uh, we open newspapers or we talk about ASEAN, People hear only about the South China Sea and the nuclear and the DPRK issue. ASEAN also 
discusses several areas of cooperation such as uh, non-communicable diseases as well as communicable diseases, especially pandemics uh, uh, and uh, other uh, less known areas of cooperation. ASEAN also uh, has programs to help cooperatives or farmers or uh, even people who sell in the markets. Uh, for example, last year under the Philippine uh, chairmanship, we were looking at how we can teach uh, innovation, digital innovation to MSMEs, micro and medium, uh, small, micro, me, small and medium enterprises. Uh, maybe you have heard uh, of uh, such companies as Gojek in Indonesia, where uh, you pay this uh, a company to buy you something uh, so because of the traffic uh, it's more economical to ask this company to get something for you or to buy something for you so uh, startups like that using digital technology uh, is uh, what we are uh, uh, attempting to introduce uh, in ASEAN uh, we are not talking in ASEAN about uh, industry 4.0 uh, how to apply uh, the uh, advent of digital innovation in uh, small businesses, in uh, medium-sized businesses, uh, etc. So uh, this is, these are other areas of cooperation that uh, ASEAN is very interested uh, in. Uh, the political and security issues are of course already very well known. Um, for example, Indonesia is uh, very concerned with IUUF, uh, illegal, unreported, and undocumented uh, fishing, IUUF. And uh, uh, you must have heard of how uh, the new Minister of Fisheries of Indonesia, Madam Susi, has burned ships. Uh, of illegal uh, fishermen uh, in, in their waters. But uh, this issue has simmered down and uh, we have tried to discuss this logically and uh, unemotionally in ASEAN and uh, we are addressing uh, the issue. Um, other member states have been found to, nationals of other member states have been found to have violated uh, this uh, IUUF. Uh, and uh, even the arrest of fishermen is a consular issue that uh, ASEAN is uh, addressing. And talking of consular issues, uh, ASEAN has just finished uh, negotiating an agreement called um, Common Consular Assistance. For example, if you do not have an embassy or a consulate in a certain area in the world, other ASEAN member states uh, can help. You. For example, there is a uh, crisis or war breaks out or conflict breaks out in a certain country and you don't have an embassy there or a, a diplomatic mission, other ASEAN members can uh, assist uh, the uh, nationals of other uh, member states. There are a few ASEAN mechanisms or bodies that are based in Jakarta. There is the Committee of Permanent Representatives, CPR, uh, that I mentioned. Uh, there is the CPR plus three mechanism, uh, CPR plus uh, China, Korea, Japan. There is the Joint uh, Cooperation Commission, JCC, which CPR hosts vis-a-vis -vis its uh, dialogue partner. So you have uh, ASEAN plus Australia, ASEAN plus Canada, ASEAN plus China, and so forth and so on. We have the ASEAN uh, EAS um, ambassadors meeting. We have the ASEAN Foundation. We have the ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation, IPAR, uh, where the Governing Council uh, is uh, composed of about eight uh, ambassadors to ASEAN plus two representatives uh, from uh, uh, other sectors like the Akadim. And then you have a very important mechanism based in Jakarta, which is called the ACCC, 
ASEAN Connectivity Coordinating uh, Committee, which is in charge of implementing the Master Plan on ASEAN Con Connectivity, MPAC, uh, it is called. The Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity is a comprehensive document that uh, seeks to implement the various initiatives uh, uh, under uh, connectivity. Connectivity has become a byword nowadays. It's so large that you have to focus on what ASEAN needs and what ASEAN should and can do. The first master plan, uh, which was crafted in 2010 and launched in 2011 and ended in 2015, 2016, was not very successful because it was a very ambitious master plan uh, uh, which listed hundreds of projects on infrastructure, etc. So learning from the lessons of the first master plan, we, the members of the ASEAN Connectivity Coordinating Committee, crafted a new master plan that uh, assessed what ASEAN needs. So there are five areas of the master plan on ASEAN connectivity, the first of which is sustainable infrastructure, then you have digital innovation, regulatory excellence, people-to-people -people, uh, mobility. Uh, and, and this cover a wide variety of cooperation to connect ASEAN. There are many uh, videos on the ASEAN website on how we intend to implement the various initiatives under this um, master plan. For example, this year, 2018, uh, we will roll out the first rolling list of priority areas on sustainable infrastructure and uh, urbanization strategies. Uh, it is estimated that around 40 million people will be transferring to cities in the next few years. And so therefore, uh, Singapore's, one of Singapore's initiatives is to produce smart cities. So in April this year, the leaders launched the Smart Cities Network. A smart city is one that addresses the issues of transportation, sanitation, peace and order, health, education, etc. So it's cross-sectoral within an urban uh, area. So this is called the Smart Cities Network. Member states nominated at least three uh, initial list of cities that will become part of this Smart Cities uh, Network. We have nominated um, Manila, uh, Cebu, and Davao to be the first candidates to the Smart uh, Cities Network. So uh, this master plan uh, uh, will be uh, uh, implemented in the next 10 years. Other areas of cooperation would be financial inclusion uh, uh, also, uh, meaning uh, uh, are, are the populations of ASEAN financially included so that they will benefit from the, from the uh, 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 advancements in digital in innovation. Uh, it also includes um, mobility of people, especially students. We want to encourage ASEAN students to study in each other's country. So for example, if the jobs are in Thailand, Filipino students can study in Thai universities. If the jobs are in the Philippines, you can encourage um, Indonesian students uh, or, or, uh, or Thai students, Lao students to come to the Philippines and study. We also want to increase intra-ASEAN uh, uh, tourism. So uh, in the past, people wanted uh, citizens of, uh, of ASEAN just wanted to go to Europe or the United States for tourism purposes. Now we want to in encourage intra-ASEAN uh, tourism, etc., etc. So there are 15 initiatives under the master plan. We are going to roll out this year two uh, 
of the sustainable infrastructure uh, projects, but we are doing very well in obtaining support and cooperation for the other initiatives uh, of uh, the master plan. So um, these are the, the mechanisms based in uh, Jakarta. For the other uh, uh, mechanisms that are uh, moving in various uh, capitals, uh, 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 we must also include the ASEAN Regional Forum or ARF, which is focusing on um, uh, confidence building measures as well as preventive diplomacy uh, initiatives. I just came back from Naipito uh, where we uh, discussed preventive diplomacy in um, conflict uh, areas such as negotiations or mediation of uh, uh, areas where there are uh, conflicts. There are certain principles uh, of ASEAN which help to create what ASEAN is now. And I am referring to consensus building, uh, ASEAN centrality, non-interference in the internal affairs of member states, and uh, peaceful uh, settlement of uh, disputes. Let me talk to you about consensus building. Just now I mentioned that there were precursors to ASEAN which did not prosper. And that is because mem other would-be member states did not see the benefit of joining uh, an ASEAN organization. This time with ASEAN, Everybody has a buy-in into, into ASEAN, the organization. They know that their national interests will be uh, uh, incorporated in the objectives, operations, and future of ASEAN. Now, uh, consensus is a much maligned issue. They're saying this is the reason why ASEAN is very slow and that the achievement level is low, etc. But for me, consensus is the reason why ASEAN has achieved what it has achieved today. Today, ASEAN is 51 years old and the secret of ASEAN's integration uh, and a secret of why this region is peaceful uh, compared with other regions in the world is because of the principle of uh, consensus. Uh, when we um, discuss issues among ourselves, we, we try to make national interest become a regional interest so that uh, everybody has a stake in the uh, progression of, of issues uh, that are covered uh, by the uh, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Uh, so th this would cover almost a variety of topics that we have uh, discussed uh, a while ago. Uh, for example, uh, let me um, cite, uh, well, the, the issue of the South China Sea. Uh, not all member states are claimants, so they are saying that uh, uh, their interest is not the same as the interest of the claimant uh, states, uh, the Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Brunei vis-a-vis -vis China. So uh, what ASEAN uh, seeks to uh, achieve is really to uh, maintain uh, peace and stability uh, in the region and uh, using rules-based uh, approaches in uh, managing the conflict and preventing it from conflagrating into conflict or even war. Uh, in the issue of uh, migrant workers, again, you see 10 different um, member countries coming from different uh, backgrounds. So you, uh, you try to crystallize a consensus. What do we agree on? So the, the uh, rights, uh, the interests of sending states as well as the interests of receiving states are all incorporated in uh, the same document, but emphasis on promoting and protecting the rights and privileges of 
migrant uh, workers. So consensus is a big principle uh, that must, uh, that uh, for me is the, is the principle giving energy uh, to ASEAN. Uh, you can go on and on on any topic, for example, on the issue of terrorism. Um, uh, some countries or most countries would avoid uh, equa equ equating terrorism with the Islamic uh, religion, and, and rightly so, because Islam does not uh, propagate terrorism. And so to, uh, to balance we use other terms to really attack the problem of terrorism and, and uh, avoid uh, stigmatizing certain uh, religions uh, in ASEAN. You cannot find 10 more disparate countries put together in one organization than ASEAN. We come from different political systems some are uh, republics, some are uh, uh, kingdoms, some are uh, socialist states. So uh, we come from different political systemic backgrounds. We come from different uh, cultural backgrounds, religion. We also come from uh, uh, different uh, colonial and post-colonial experiences. So, you know, if there were no ASEAN, I don't know, this region would have fallen into pieces and would have been firing uh, missiles to each other to solve their problems. But here you are, you have 10 countries uh, find, who found consensus on very, uh, on issues uh, that are so, uh, differently expressed in each of the member states and yet they agreed that we should move forward and um, make national interest become a regional interest. Uh, the other issue or the other principle I'd like to discuss is ASEAN centrality, which is very crucial because uh, Almost all of us, with the exception of uh, Thailand, came from colonial backgrounds. And we have been uh, looking at our history where foreigners or former col uh, colonial masters uh, crafted or shaped the destiny of our respective countries. So ASEAN made it a point that this time they will have a say in what happens in their region. ASEAN will determine uh, their future, which is a very difficult uh, uh, objective to obtain because both the colonial masters and ASEAN who, member countries who have been um, uh, colonized, they have to be weaned away from that old habit of allowing somebody else to dictate. Uh, to them. So the uh, principle of centrality, although there is no academic uh, definition that I have found so far, can be manifested in various uh, ways. For example, last year, when I was chairing the negotiation of uh, documents of ASEAN-led mechanisms such as EAS, ASEAN Plus 3, ARF, we saw to it that we worked on an ASEAN text. The ASEAN text became the negotiating text because it is written from an ASEAN point of view. So uh, this is one manifestation. Another one is that in the mechanisms that were mentioned uh, just now, ASEAN sets the agenda. This is what we are going to talk about. This is what our themes uh, would be. This is what uh, we should uh, discuss, etc. So uh, ASEAN centrality, means that uh, ASEAN will set the agenda, ASEAN will lead the mechanisms, and ASEAN will uh, determine the direction of uh, cooperation vis-a-vis -vis her external partners. Let me talk to you about the ASEAN Secretariat. Uh, it is based in Jakarta. Uh, it is located at Jalan Sisingamangaraja. Uh, in uh, southern uh, Jakarta. The ASEAN Secretariat is the nexus, the center of ASEAN's activity. It is the 
coordinating mechanism that sees to it that all the three pillars of the ASEAN community are knitted together to uh, obtain uh, or achieve what ASEAN has set uh, for itself. Uh, it is headed by the Secretary General, uh, who is chosen alphabetically in a rotating order. The current chair, uh, who uh, took uh, over his position in January this year, is from Brunei Darussalam, Dato Lim Jokhoi, who is no stranger to ASEAN. He's been dealing with ASEAN, especially the economic integration part, uh, for the last uh, 25 years or 30 years. So he's no stranger to ASEAN. And he is assisted by four deputies, Secretary General. One is in charge of the economic integration uh, community. Uh, and I'm proud to say he's Filipino. And he was openly recruited, meaning he was recruited on the basis of his uh, credentials. He competed uh, publicly or openly with other uh, candidates. His name is uh, Aladin Rilio, DSG, or Deputy Secretary General for the Economic Community. And the other Deputy Secretary General was, uh, is seconded uh, by his uh, country, uh, and he comes from uh, Vietnam. Uh, the other, that's the Deputy Secretary General for uh, of the APSC, and there's a Deputy Secretary General for the Socio-Cultural Community. Right now, he's from, his name is Vong Tep. he comes from Thailand, but he will be replaced by, uh, by somebody from uh, Cambodia. And then you have a fourth Secretary General who takes care of the corporate affairs and the public relations of the ASEAN uh, Secretariat. Uh, it has a website, ASEAN.org, which is a treasure trove of all kinds of information about ASEAN. Because all these years, ASEAN has come up with various documents and, um, and uh, resources uh, that can help uh, students of ASEAN especially know more about ASEAN. If you are a nutritionist, or an agriculture expert, or a, uh, or a uh, finance expert, you can find uh, what you want to, uh, what you're looking for in the ASEAN Secretariat uh, website. There are prompts there that will lead you uh, to your resources. I'm happy to say that, the, uh, for example, the ASEAN Secretariat uh, has a gallery, an ASEAN uh, gallery, which houses the um, uh, art pieces from all over ASEAN. Um, only recently, uh, Secretary uh, Alan Peter Cayetano donated a, an ostrich egg carved uh, with the mother and, and son uh, 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 carving and donated it to the uh, ASEAN uh, Secretariat uh, Gallery. Uh, artist gallery. Uh, so, um, and then uh, under the different community pillars, Deputy Secretary General, you have directors, assistant directors, technical officers, etc., taking care of every uh, uh, area of study possible. Uh, for example, we uh, uh, in the Committee of Permanent Representatives. Uh, approve project proposals uh, in the various sectors uh, in, in uh, transboundary haze, uh, for example, or the teaching of, uh, of uh, uh, ASEAN languages in various universities. We don't attend uh, the um, meetings of these various uh, uh, sectoral issues, and yet there is inside the ASEAN Secretariat an expert who attends those meetings and sees to it that projects are not uh, duplicated and that they are relevant to the needs of, uh, people, uh, of, of the peoples of ASEAN. And so you can get information from these various departments or units inside the ASEAN Secretariat. We have just recently elevated 
the unit handling connectivity. We, it became a director level uh, unit now because connectivity has really become a byword, an important part of the uh, ASEAN uh, agenda. So uh, visit the ASEAN Secretariat uh, at, uh, in Jakarta. Um, ASEAN works somewhat similarly with the UN headquarters in, in New York in the sense that um, all member states and all dialogue partners have a different ambassador to uh, accredited, not to the building, but to ASEAN, and the Secretary General receives the credentials of these uh, ambassadors. There are currently around 100 ambassadors who are accredited to ASEAN, uh, but uh, they also handle bilateral relations with Indonesia. But the ASEAN member states, all 10 of us, we have a separate ambassador to ASEAN, and all the dialogue partners have a separate ambassador to, uh, to ASEAN. And we are all based in, uh, in Jakarta. That's why I sometimes call Jakarta the capital of uh, ASEAN. Uh, Jakarta also hosts uh, several other centers uh, for ASEAN. ASEAN is a very misunderstood organization. I would like you to know more about ASEAN, how it seeks to serve the people uh, in, in, in various uh, areas. And for this, I'd like you to visit the uh, website of ASEAN. It's called ASEAN.org, and you'll find all kinds of information in this uh, website. And uh, let us all contribute to making ASEAN a truly caring and sharing community, a truly peaceful and stable community, a truly progressive and economically stable community. Thank you.